Shabbat Shalom everybody and you are welcome to the Shabbat of this morning and uh, I just want to say as usual that we give the glory to the Lord for the grace and for his sustaining uh, love, for his blessing and for his peace uh, upon us individually and collectively for making us to behold and to see uh, this beautiful day in the land of the living. The parasha of this morning is called Parasha Vayeke. Para, parasha Vayeke. That is the parasha of this morning. And and I and this uh, today, as we know, is called Shabbat Shekhalim. The Shabbat of this morning, the Shabbat of today is called Shabbat Shekhalim. So that is the, the Shabbat of, of Tugman, the Shabbat of giving, where we gave to the Lord to build uh, the world, the Mishkan. And when Moshe Rabbeinu said, enough is enough, don't bring it again, uh, you, you, you can stop, we have enough to build uh, the temple. I hope that we can see such a synagogue or such a religious place today that can come and say to, to his people, don't bring again, it's enough, 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 you know, and that, uh, that uh, uh, everything is enough to build uh, the, uh, the temple or the synagogue. Because what we, what we have uh, today is bring and bring and bring and, then it, and it never ends, you know, so. But in the days of Moshe, that was a different, a different case. So the Shabbat of this one, as I said, is called Shabbat Shekalim, and that is what I, I subtitle to uh, the parasha of this morning. Okay, and so the parasha is called Parasha Vayeker. That is the parasha of this morning, which means Vayeker means to assemble, to gather together, to assemble the entire assembly, the entire congregation of the children of Israel. Today is known as Shabbat Shekalim, as I said, and this week uh, Torah portion begins with the word Vayeher, which means together, to assemble. And Moshe congregated the entire community of Israel. Moshe activated a community that had been found because they all witnessed the redemption from Egypt. And the revelation at Sinai, the word used for the community here, which is uh, Edad, <laughs> Edad is, is related to the word uh, to the word for witness or testimony. The word used for uh, in the Torah uh, to to, uh, to uh, for the for, for the word congregation is the same word which uh, is the same root with the word to witness or a testimony. We can see that Moshe Rabbeinu instituted or activated the entire assembly of the children of Israel that was formed from redemption that came from Egypt. God, by his power and by his strength, redeemed them and he is now activating the entire community to stand as one after the sin of the golden calf. We remember what happened last week when the, the, the assembly was nearly destroyed, when the entire congregation was, was nearly consumed, right, because of the sin of the golden calf. The Torah says that 3,000 souls were lost on that day. So many, many of them are, are now what? They are, not, they, 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 they are in a state of shock. They are in a, in, in a state of panic. They are in a mood of self preservation because they, they, they saw what happened last week that 3,000 souls were killed. Here was a group of people that had been brought together and remained rather passive, except when it comes to complaining because we know that the Israelites are the chief complainer. You know, we know how to complain a lot. We don't thank God, thank you. We don't thank God, you know, but we, we glorify you for what you've done for, for us. We only sit down there and complain and complain and complain and complain. Moshe succeeded in activating the sense of congregational among or the sense of congregation amongst them in ways that have marked the meaning of our synagogue life to, to, to these very days among the Hebrew community since that time. The Israelite community is dynamic and, and actively engaged 
is individual members when, when it follows the directive of Moshe. I will repeat. The Hebrew community, the Israeli community is a very dynamic community. We actively engage our members. We actively engage our people. We actively engage individuals to follow when we follow the directive of Moshe. When we follow the directive of Moshe, we become very, very dynamic. But when we reject, reject the, direct, the directive of Moshe, then the problem. So as a people, or as a race, or as a community, God is telling us that if we follow his Torah, if we follow his ways that he has commanded us in the Torah, then we can be able to have a dynamic life, a dynamic community, a dynamic society, a, dy a dynamic family that can attain to the highest level of anything in life. The first way which begins a Torah portion of this morning it contains uh, it contained in the Mizrah of Shabbat of Zabbat. We can see that in in Exodus chapter thirty five verse one. The beginning talks about the, be the beginning of the of the of the of the parasha of, of this morning talks about the the Mizrah that is the commandment of Shabbat of Zabbat that Shabbat is sacred. That we, it, 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 it is a day of what? It's a day of commun, for communal joy. It is a day that we commune together, one by one, together as, as a group, as a soul. Remember, the, the souls gather together before God and they become one soul. You see, that is what I'm, I'm talking about. The energy, the force combines together to become one. And once we all the energy combines together to become one, it becomes a greater and a mighty energy. That is what God is saying, that individually, we are made of individual, right? And even though if we look at our body, the human body is made up of individual cells, right? Different type of cells. But these cells, they work in homostasis. They, that, that means they work in together in harmony to balance each other's up. Right? Once, if one cell say, you know, I don't want to work again, then there's a problem. Right? They all work together as one force. And because the, the, their main aim is to maintain balance in your body so that you can feel well and feel en en energized. That is the purpose. So the same thing here in, uh, that God is saying that once each and every one of us individually comes together, we become a greater force. And we have in our mind, right? One goal, and the goal is to glorify the Holy One, blessed be He, and to live a good and a wonderful life. One commentary suggests that Moshe began his congregation activation program with Shabbat so that the people could find the peace in their relationship with one another. A community is made up of individual. After all, who needs to find the, the opportunity to accommodate one another's differences, to appreciate the special quality of each other? Shabbat is the day when we can enjoy a sense of community, whether within our family or our congregation. Meaning and strength are gained through the interaction of individual in the positive setting. That is what I just explained now. So we can have, when we gather together in a positive setting, with a positive mind, right? We can now be able to, to do or to enjoy one another. You know, like for example, in our, in our own egg, we sit down together, we discuss about, uh, you know, our, our life, our life, Experiencing, we talk about the chapter, we talk about the Torah. We, we, we have the Torah study, you know. You, uh, 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 you bring your idea, I bring my idea. You know, we interpret uh, uh, the Torah the way God has given us the understanding and the wisdom according to our, uh, our sage. You know, that is that's what we call harmony, a community. 
you know. But if one, one person can say, no, me, I don't want, and this one say, me, me, I don't want, then there will be no unity, there will be no harmony. But what the Shabbat brought, Shabbat brought what? Harmony among the children of Israel. Remember, as I said, last week, they were in despair. Remember? They were in trouble. These are people that came up from Egypt. They lived all their life in Egypt. They seen the way the Egyptians were doing things. And they want to come and do the same thing. And God said, no, that is not right. And so, when 3,000 people died, all of, hey, you know, everybody was just putting their hand on their head. So there was this despair among them. So, for Moshe to unite them together, to bring them together, so that is why we say that God gave us the, the what? Gave us uh, the Mishkan. The Mishkan is a central point. When people ask no central fo focus, they are divided. They are like wanton. They are everywhere. But once they have a central point to focus all their energy, to focus all their strength, then there will be a purpose. And the Mishkan, is that central point the Torah is that central point that God gave to us after the sin of the golden calf God was success God was able to bring out Israel from Egypt it was easy for God to bring Israel out of Egypt but it wasn't easy for him to bring Egypt out of Israel because it is already in their intestine in their belly right it's very hard it, 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 it's a old, it, it, don't mind those people. Or oh, some rabbi that will come and tell you, oh, Israel is this holier than thou. It's a lie because the Torah is talking about something else. That is no holier than thou here. We are all human beings. You know, Israel never commits sin. It is the Erebra. That is nonsense. The Torah never talks about that. The Torah said that Israel sinned. The Torah didn't say Erebra sinned. So we have to follow exactly what the Torah said. He will explain here that they were playing wardom. The Israelites were playing wardom. They were, they, 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 they were committing terrible sins. Because that is what they learned from Egypt. And they want to live their life like that. Like the life of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God is saying, you are the kingdom of what? Of priests. Remember? The first time God, when God brought them out, said, you are the kingdom of priests. Initially, there was no intention to build the Mishkan. There was no Mishkan in Egypt. Initially, no. God said, all of you are the kingdom of priests. All of you are priests. Until when the golden calf came. And God saw that, okay, these people, they need something they can see. They need something that, that they, they can focus their energy and their mind on. Then God gave us the Mishkan. So that we can now be able to concentrate our energy. Want to see? Okay, I give you the Mishkan. But I'm going to modernize it. Not the way you, you are doing it in, in Egypt, but in a different way. In the way that is clean. In the way that you don't walk, you don't bow down to the work of your hands. You don't worship the work of your hand. This one is for you to see and concentrate and put your mind right on it, in it. So that is the, the purpose of the Mishkan. The purpose of the Mishkan is a central point where all the children of Israel can come and do what? And Focus the attention and be one soul before God. The second way that Moshe creates the congregation of Israel is through the construction of the Mishkan, through the construction of the sanctuary. Everyone is invited to participate in this project. The Torah explained that each person willingly participated using his or her own unique talents and abilities. The Mishkan, the sanctuary, was to be the place of the Shekinah, of the dwelling place of God, the presence of God. The place to establish peace between human and the divine realm of existence. You can see that. This is what I just explained. That it is a place where the, where the physical and the spiritual meet to, together. The Mishkan is that point where the earthly thing and the heavenly thing where they met okay the meeting point is the mishkan and we can see that god said that everybody has to do what has to participate in it those who are what who are moved see god does not god does not force you to serve him no 
God does not force any human being to serve him. If one rabbi come, or if any president that call himself a servant of God, first said, you must serve God. That's a lie. No. You don't if, if you will that you don't want to serve God, don't serve him. But remember, you are going to face the consequence when the time comes. That is it. God does not force you to serve him. It is a choice. You have to decide within yourself, within your soul, within your spirit, say, I want to serve the living God, the true and the living God. It is a choice. It is not by force. It is not by scaring you. No. It's a, you make that personal decision. When you use fear for people to obey, then they are going to revolt because they are not deciding by themselves. You are using fear to do what? To put them into submission. And the Torah is not using fear to put us into submission. It is a true choice. He said, those people who have motivated them, they should take the Torah, the gift of Hashem, of, of the Holy One, uh, blessed be He. Let them donate, let, let, let them give, take my, my portion from them. And they all came in, in their millions, in their thousands, you know, donating and donating and donating. What he said, enough is enough. Don't bring again. Oh, stop, stop, stop. We have enough and it's even surplus. You know? I wish that we can have such pastors or such rabbis today. I will tell you, don't bring again. Enough, enough, enough. You know? But it's enough. It's enough. That will never happen. You know? They don't ask you, bring and bring and bring non stop. They want to drive, they want to the suck you dry for their own personal benefit. Not for the work of God. Not for the work of the synagogue, not for the work of the, of, of, of the people, but for their own personal gain. And that is not what God is talking about. We can see the people, they brought and brought and brought to Moshe Rabbeinu to say, Enough! Don't bring it again, stop! And this has been in, in, in what ingrained in us individually and collectively as an Israelite, as, as a Hebrew people, that we have to do what? To give Sedekah, to give, always give. Because when you give, that is when you receive. Giving is receiving. That's what the Torah said, and it is true in life, which I personally experienced in my life. So, and we can see that the work of the temple, as many people would like to, to, to tell us, oh, the, the men gave a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. What about the women? Where about the women? Because the Torah said that the men and the women, they did the work of the temple. It is not only the men. Everybody with wisdom, with understanding, God gave wisdom to the women because the, the screen they all win by the women, the design all done by the women, no by the men. The construction, the physical construction, yes, were done by the women, but all the interior design were done by the women. That whose God, whom God, God has given wisdom to design everything that was inside it. So it is the work of the temple was not only done by the men, but by the women, about our women, our special women that God has given us. Just as Shabbat was the time to establish peace within the human community, the Mishkan was the place to establish the cosmic peace. The Shabbat emphasized that in order to find a spiritual peace, we must first find with one another. A congregation gather its what its individual to discover a sense of mutual honor, pleasure from being together. Only in the context, only in that context, do we establish a spiritual peace. You see that on the Shabbat, it, it is a time for what to establish peace, for us to come together as one, not as individual. An individual prayer can never be answered in the congregation. But when you pray together as one, as a, as, a, as a team, then that prayer is answered. Because you are what all the energy combines together and goes, it's a force that goes to the heavens. In your home, yes, you can pray individually in your home. Your God and God will answer you. But in the congregation, when we lift up our voice, when, uh, when uh, 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 the, uh, 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 the, the, uh, the, the, the leadership come and say, okay, let us pray. Let us pray for this, 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 this. And everybody join together in that prayer and they pray and that force goes to the heaven. Not that the, the, the leadership say, let us pray for this, let us pray for peace uh, 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 in our country. For example, and you are praying for, for money. 
Everybody is praying for peace, and you, you alone say, no, 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 me, I don't want. Me, I'm going to pray to, to, to get money. But where is the unity? So the everything has to be united. So uh, that is what I am saying that it is, it is it, the, Shabbat, the, the, the Shabbat emphasizes that in order to find spiritual peace, we must first of all make, find reconciliation among ourselves. And that is what uh, 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 um, Yeshua the prophet said. Yeshua the prophet said that, listen, if you come before God to do what? To give your gift. And you remember that you, you sin or you wrong your brothers. You leave, you leave your gift down there, you go and do what? Seek reconciliation with your brother. Then you come and give your gift and God will accept you. That is what the Torah said. It's not hard. That is what the Torah said. You see, it is not that, oh, you know, a, a proud mind, you know, I'm proud. I want to give, I want to show the whole world. I take the money, all the dollars. I want to show, you know, that I put it there, boom, you know, let them know that I'm, I'm, don I'm donating 10 million uh, dollars. God will not accept you because in your heart, you, 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 you be proud. That's not what God wants. God wants is a man that is sober. And he's telling us that for us to do that, we need reconciliation. We have to re re remember, Moshe is reconciliating the world, the community. Remember, all this is based on, the, on what happened, on the event that happened last week. The worshipping of the golden calf. So, in this case, God, everybody is, is what is despair now. Moshe has to do what? Find reconciliation. To bring them all together as one, because without bringing them all together as one, they cannot con they cannot move forward as one, and they have to move forward as one because that is not their final destination. Their final destination is in the land of Canaan, the promised land. And so, therefore, likewise here, this planet is not our final destination. We have to move together as in one piece, not in pieces, not divided, but at one. So that's what the Torah is talking about. Spirituality is not an individual moment of fulfillment. Rather, it is a communal enterprise of cosmic proportion. Exactly. Spirituality is not a moment of individual work, individual uh, fulfillment. Oh, God, I have a prayer. Yay! No. It is together. Togetherness. It is one. And all of us has to be one. It's, it, it, it is immense in the spiritual realm. When all the children of God gather together in one accord, God will always listen. We see in, in the issue of our people, when we are being oppressed, when we are in danger, when the enemy will come to rise against us, the Torah said what? And we will pray about in unison, in unison, in one. We do, and of course, oh God, the Philistines are coming, deliver us. And another was saying, oh God, the Philistines are, are, are coming, give me money. Eh? Oh God, the Philistines are coming, give me horse to run away. Ah. How, is God, how is that prayer going go to be answered? Because it's a divided prayer. But when all of us rise up in one in, in oneness, in one form, in one way, say, God, the enemy are, are the dogs. Deliver us. Save us. Forgive us our iniquity, our sins. Deliver us from all our, our enemies. God will rise, will listen and rise up and deliver us. Because we are praying as one. Without the Shabbat, the Mishkan makes no sense, which is true. Why spend the time, energy, and resources to construct a beautiful building if it will remain empty for Shabbat and other holy communal moment. Of course, without the Shabbat, the, the, the Mishkan is useless. Remember, in Egypt, they all have their own custom and, and, their, and their traditions. They go to their temple to celebrate all their activities, all their religious activities. Without that, their temple that they build is a useless temple. The same thing that is happening here, the Shabbat is a day where we all, you see, I want to, 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 to uh, give us this uh, uh, head, uh, head on, that this, before the Mishkan, we have the Shabbat, right? Before the Mishkan was given, remember, uh, uh, when God gave us the commandments on the mountain, the Mishkan wasn't built. 
Now it's not Mishkan. God said, you shall observe the Shabbat. Right? They were supposed to have the, observe the Shabbat. They observe the Shabbat individually in their home. Right? Everybody, they just stay, no work. Now everybody enjoy themselves with your family, with your, with your, you know, with your children, with your neighbors, right? But when the sin of the golden calf came, God gave us Mishkan. And God said, you have to celebrate the Shabbat in the Mishkan. All of you have to come together in the Mishkan as one in the temple and celebrate and seek reconciliation. You see, the Catholic, they copy that, right? You see, the, the, the Catholic, they call it confession. Every day, uh, every day people will go to, the, to, their, to their church, right? And the, the Pope or whosoever is there will sit down there uh, inside a room and the, I sit on, on the TV, you know? And the one person will come and say, oh, Pope, I commit sin, I commit sin, forgive me, you know? And they, they go, oh, yeah, yeah, you are forgiven. All, the, all this is copied from the Torah. You seek reconciliation in the Mishkan. Everybody come. Oh, my neighbor did something wrong. Sorry, today the Shabbat is a happy day. It's, 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 a, it's a positive day. It's a positive day. It's a day where we enjoy and reconciliate together as what well, as community, as the children of Yaakov. However, it is it is the construction of the sanctuary, the Mishkan, that captured the imagination of uh, uh, an enthusiasm of the people of Israel. It was without a doubt the moment, the most successful building project in our history. The Torah explained, and and they spoke to Moshe, saying, "The people have brought more service for the construction work." that the Etana has commanded to do. And Moshe commanded, and the voice was communicated throughout the camp, saying, Men and women, don't, don't do any more work in regard to the sacred offering. And the people ceased from bringing. That's what the Torah said. That is the book of Exodus chapter 36, verse 5 and 7. He said, no, don't bring again enough. Because the men and the women, they were so overjoyed to say, God, thank you. You are forgiving us our sin. Remember the sin last week? The sin of the golden calf. So this is to, is, is, to, is to do because of guilt. The people are guilty. They feel guilty. Because God delivered you from Egypt. God did well, divide the, the Red Sea. God gave you, came down from his throne to speak to you. On the mountain, and still yet, God invites from all your enemies, and still yet you are not graceful. I know my people are like that, you know, we complain a lot. So it, it's normal. So this is what, say, as it, as it, because that's, they, they themselves find themselves that, oh, what we did is actually wrong. We, did, we, we create an, an object, and we, uh, and we put power inside that object. We give power to that object. What type of nonsense is this? We want to worship. The work of our own hands. The God that delivered us is, is an invisible God. We didn't see Him when He was doing all these things. Now we want to create an object for ourselves and give power to that object and start worshiping that object. That doesn't make sense. So they felt that guilt within them. And so that was the, 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 the artwork pouring, you know, of. of uh, the outward pouring of the uh, of the um, of, of their guilt. That is the, the, the outward pouring of the guilt of the of the guilt was giving a lot uh, uh, of gold and, uh, and, and and silver and donation uh, to the construction of, of the temple. First, we must remember that this story immediately follow the story of the golden calf, as I said. The greatest theological scandal in the history of our people, of the people of Israel. Imagine the people of Israel having experienced the miraculous redemption from Egypt, from the Egyptian bondage, and having consented to accepting the exclusive authority of one God, having been the recipient of God's direct communication, throwing Throw it all away by worshipping an idol they created. It is difficult to believe that any people could be so profoundly ungrateful, rebellious, 
and just plain theological silly as to create their own image and attribute power to it. Moshe responded by smashing the stone tablet, a testimony to their broken uh, promise. Remember on the mountain, what did they say? Oh, what God has said, we will do, right? That was the response. God, don't kill us because your voice is, is what your voice is powerful. Your voice is so strong that if we stay 10 minutes more, we will die. God, please speak to Moshe. Then Moshe will speak to, to us, right? That was the agreement. And God said, they, they spoke in word. That is nice, wonderful. Everything that the Lord God wants, everything we do. Is that what God wants? By creating an image? No! They broke that promise immediately after God spoke to them two seconds ago. So it shows you we human beings. It shows you a mortal. And that is why God said, I am not a human being. I am not a mortal. And it's so sad that, that some people say that God is a mortal God. You know? But the God of Israel is eternal. That's why we call it the eternal. It's not a mortal. It doesn't change. It doesn't say, oh, you know what? Uh, I, I didn't mean it. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I, I made a mistake. No. Our God doesn't make, make a mistake. He's a supreme God. He's the God of all gods. He's the father of all beings. So, when he speaks, he stands by his word. It doesn't matter. He stands by his word for eternity. When he gives his word, his word never returns to him empty. No. His word has to accomplish the purpose by which it has been sent out for. So that is what I'm saying, that we saw, we saw that our people, our forefathers, they broke that promise that they just made yesterday. And God is telling them, because of this, this is what happened. And that, that's why God gave us the Mishkan, to, re, to reorient us, to reorient our mind, to say, okay, I know it is hard for you to believe in me because you, you can't see me. It is hard for you to comprehend who am I Right? Okay, I will give you a simpler way. I will make it very, very simple for you to understand who am I as a God, as a creator, the creator of the heavens and earth. Okay? I will give you the Mishkan for you to understand, to put your attention and to put all your focus there. But that is not the end. The end goal is what? Is the Garden of Eden. Right? The end goal is the Garden of Eden. But the Mishkan is just a replica of the Garden of, of Eden. The depth of guilt, okay, the construction of the sanctuary contained a much more profound message which informed the quality of our, of our, of our community, the Hebrew uh, community. In their commentary, the rabbis demonstrate how each aspect of the sanctuary needs to be understood as an instrument for transmission of life. That every part of the sanctuary has a meaning and it transmits life from bad to good. For example, we learn that the reason God commanded the building of the sanctuary is, to, is, is, is so that God himself can dwell in their midst. Exodus chapter 25 verse 8. The Kozeka rabbi asked, where is this sanctuary? Where is God to be found? And he responded, Where will let God in? Where can God be found? The rabbi responded, Where will let God in? That is where God can be found. Into our lives, into our heart, into our being. We build that sanctuary in our heart by the way we choose to live. We have to build the sanctuary individually and collectively in our mind. In our soul, in our spirit, the entrance, that's where God can be found. And how we choose to live our lives. You see, we come to the synagogue, we, we, we pretend, you know, we wear, uh, you know, the, 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 the most expensive things in life, you know, uh, all kinds of clothes, all kinds of things, you know, most expensive, right? But our heart is as dirty as that of a pig. You think that God will accept us? But just wasting our time, my friend. He said, outward appearance. And God does not talk about outward appearance. God is talking about the internal appearance. That is the most important. Not your outward appearance. 
You have to be who you are. And you, you, you have to be yourself, not pretending to be someone else. So not pretending, not, not pretending to be who you are not. Because most of our people, we can see that in, 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 in our community that, that most people are they pretend to be who they are not. Right? Oh, I want to uh, I, I, I want to buy that and get that and give, get this and get for their heart. I, I don't even know what to say. To command, to collect the donation begins with the word to take rather than to give. As sage, as sages explain, the giving of tzedakah uh, should be in the spirit of receiving it, and through a giving to other, we receive a greater gift. Which means God said God, the, the, God did not use the word to take, right? He said. Begin with the word. Sorry, uh, he said. I said uh, uh, the commandment to collect the, the, the donation begins with the word to take. I'm sorry, to take and not to give, right? Take. God said, take my my truma, right? Take. God, the God is a give. There are two different things. Give is like, oh, give me. I say you are forcing me, right? I say I, I want to, you know. No, God said take. So God is not saying give me. No, God said take from what I have given you. Remember when they were in Egypt, God said go and ask the Egyptian anything, and they will do what, and they will give it unto you. And the children of Israel went, and the the, the Torah said, and Israel left Egypt with a high hand. I mean, they looted Egypt completely to zero. Because God gave them favor. All the gold of, of Egypt, all the diamond, all the stones, everything of Egypt, Israel took everything. So now God has given you, and God is saying, take from what I have given you for the construction of the temple. It's, it's simple. God will never tell you to give him or to take that he will tell you, give me or take from me if God has not given you first. God will give you first before he tell you, I will take from what I have given you. Okay? So I understand that principle. Always understand. Go will not please go do, do not follow those rabbis or those people that tell you you have to give this, give this, give this, even though they know that you don't have a job. They don't want you to go and steal? They don't want you to go and rob? Is that the way the other side? No. But understand. When you give somebody a job, right? It's already it you got something, right? It works and works and get prosper. Get prosper, and then from what God has given you, what God has given you that work, then you can you can take from that thing that God has given you, and and give it over to God willingly. So nobody is forcing you. It's not by force. It is not by force. No, we, are, we need to understand this very very deep. It is not by force. God does not force anyone to serve Him. Yeshua, the prophet said. If you stop the people from serving, if, if, if you stop the people from praising me, God is able to raise up stones to praise me. God is able to say, stone, rise up and praise me. So God, God is God. So you, God does not force anyone or any human being to come and serve him. It is by choice. You decide and you say, God, I'm willing. And once you decide by yourself, that makes it more simpler, easy. Like God, you know that nobody is, is what nobody is forcing you. The measurement of the art of the testimony, the center of the sanctuary, as stated in half, demonstrating that none is complete in and of itself. We are completed only through our relationship with one another. The ark was to be covered inside and out with gold. Why? The inside, where no one can see it, right? The ark is to be covered with gold inside and outside. Why inside? Why do you want to cover it inside with gold? Because nobody is seeing the gold inside. We, we should not, normally we cover it outside in, I mean, in the human sense because we want the, the outside to, we want the people to see the outside that is full of gold, right? To shine, you know. Yeah, I am the I'm the man, right? But God is saying, put it also inside. So why inside? Why what is this is this teaching us? 
to teach us the lesson of integrity that each one of us should be like they are. Our actions and intention should be in the concept of good, right? To teach us integrity. The way you are, the way you are outside, that should be the way you are inside. The way you are inside, that is where you are. You should be outside, not uh, double tongue. You know, not uh, 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 they call it uh, what they call it in, in, in policy, in, in politics. Stop uh, double standard. You don't apply double standard. No. If I want to apply this, the, the one standard, that stands be for me and for everybody. I don't say, okay, everybody do this and me, I do this. No. It is integrity. Like, it is, and it, it, is, it is so sad that in the world that we live now, every nation is all about double standard. Me, I can do this. You, you cannot do it. You, you, you do what I say. Don't do what I do. That is what we have in the world now. Because we have power. Right? I have a nuclear bomb. I can force you to do my will. It's not. It's wrong. That is not right. Right? The way when I say that uh, we are practicing democracy, then everybody should do democracy in the way that I, you know, in the, in, in the right way, not my own way uh, special and your own way is not special. No, democracy should be should be what should be democracy. We said that we are a democratic community or a democratic nation, right? And I am not allowed to decide by myself what I want for my own body. What type of a democracy is that? Even though in the ethics, in the medical, in the medical e e ethics, it is said that a patient has the right to refuse a, a medication. In the medical ethics, it is said that a patient has the right to say no to medication. But why are you forcing me to take a, 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 a vaccine when, when I don't want it? Where is the democracy? So it doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense at all. So people live in a double standard. And God is saying that is all right. That is why He gave us it. He told us, you see, put the God inside and put it outside. Everything has to be the same. No, no double tongue. No double standard. The cherubims on top of the ark have the faces of babies, so that we understand that guiding this ark, this Torah, this divine te uh, teaching, are not powerful soldiers or frightening gadolos. Uh, 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 but babies, you know, like strong soldier. <laughs> no, for babies, Yeshua said, right? For you to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be like what? You have to be like the babies. Without you putting your character like that of the baby, you can never enter the kingdom of God. It will never, it will, it's not possible. And this is what Yeshua, the prophet, is saying that when we begin to apply double standard. One for the Kohen Gadol, and one for the Kohanim, and one, uh, 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 me as a Kohen Gadol, you know what, I'm the Kohen Gadol, right? Oh, I can, I, I can go and do some good, good job on Shabbat. Oh, you cannot do anything on, on Shabbat. Where is the standard? I am even telling you, I am even profaning the Shabbat, whereby the people can see and they will do, do the same thing. Because the children, they learn, the best way to learn is to copy their, their parents. Right? And here I come and condemn you that what you are doing is wrong. But me, I'm doing the same thing. Where is the justice? So that is what Yeshua is saying that, no, for you to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be like the babies. And that is what we, we can see, we can see here. Finally, in implementing the actual construction, the Torah repeats the wall, and it was done. This wall is part of the creation vocabulary. Remember in the book of Genesis, and God said, let there be light, and, then, and it was done, and there was light. It was so. Everything was good. Right? In ancient days, sanctuary were built to celebrate the divine act of creation. The message here is that God's creation of the world is bound to the reciprocal human task of constructing the Mishkan, that is the sanctuary. Humankind, a tradition, a humankind, her tradition teaches is God's partner in the continual process of creation. Our tradition teaches us that we are what we are partner with our Creator. We are partners. To continue the creation. 
God has created everything, right? There is nothing that man has created. No. God created everything. What man is doing is to take from that creation to create something new, right? To build something new, to bring up something new, right? That is it. We are all partners. And God wants us to be partners. We are his children. He wants us to build a better world, a good one, a, 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 a perfect one. The, the creation of God is what God said. Everything I created is what is good and is very, very good. What did he say? It's very bad. God says it's very, very good. But there is one step again that God is, wants us to, to go, to move another step ahead. And that step is to do what? To make it perfect. Perfection. Good, very good is different from perfection. And that is what God wants us to be perfect. To perfect the creation. All the human body is very good. Excellent. Super. But the human body is not perfect. It's not. The human body is very, very good. But it's not perfect. Perfect is there is no minute, no any nano mistake. Not a mistake. Everything is vroom. And only our God is perfect. And that is what He wants us to be. To be like, for us to be like our Father. Perfect like our Father. You see? So that when the time comes, or we will become, we will, we will be eternal like our God. Perfect in, 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 in all areas. So the Torah portion begins with, congregation, with congregating and, uh, and goes on to the record of creating efforts on behalf of the community. The Shabbat commands remind us that we must take one day each week to cease from our act of creation in order to acknowledge the and appreciate God's gift of creation. That one day of the week we are stay from our work and sit down and think about the creation of our Father, the Holy One, blessed be He. Say, oh God, I thank you for giving me life to reach this day, to see this wonderful creation. Remember, there are people who are born into this world and until they die, they will never see a, a, a tree. They don't even know the color of the tree. They don't even know the, the face of their own children. They don't even, they don't even know, you know, there are some who will never even hear the voice of their own children. You see? God is great. And God has given you eyes to see, ear to ears, hands to touch, all these things. What else do you want him to do? You have to praise him. He's given you life. You have to praise him and thank him. One day, you relax, to rewind, you know? Not, you know, when you walk your body too much, you are going to collapse. Even though auto car, you know, motor or uh, a car, they break down. If you, if you overwork them too much, how much more the human body? You relax one day, out of the seven days, one day you relax, calm down, and you, you know, you, you rewind yourself back. The mission symbolizes the human divine partnership with God. The Zohar commentary on this week's Torah portion contains the prayer that we recite at the ark when the ark or as the ark is open. Barushimo, the ark of the act of revelation that we are about to experience in reading the Torah is connected to the act of creation as symbolized by a continual construction of the Mishkan in our heart, in our soul, in our being. The location in time and space of God's presence. The very words of this prayer point to the redemptive promise that is mediated through our observance of the Torah, that we open our heart to God's word for good, life, and peace. Let us hope that the world can be transformed to the holy sanctuary of our construction so that we can fulfill our task as God creating partners. That we can fulfill our task as a partner with our Creator in creating a perfect world. And I hope, and I pray, and I believe, you know, that one day, God, the Almighty, will give us the ability, the strength. I, I, I tell you, 
from with all my heart, with all my soul, I believe that when the Messiah comes, he will perfect everything. And everything will be perfect. Will, will, will be perfect. For, for, the, 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 for, for, the, for the intention of our Creator, the Holy One, blessed be He, is for His work to continue and to be perfect. And He's going to do that when the Messiah comes. As we all rise up and ask God, that God, please, in my days, in my time, let the Messiah come and perfect your creation. Shabbat Shalom.